All right, welcome to Cosmic Reach. So there's a YouTuber by the name of Final Four Each who's been trying to make a Minecraft clone over the past several months. And it ended up turning into something really interesting uh, with some actually, like, legitimately improved features from the original game. And one of the things about mine, a lot of people try to make uh, Minecraft clones. And one of the things about Minecraft is that um, many people like the older versions a lot better than the newer versions. So there's kind of a split between Golden Age Minecraft or Legacy Minecraft, which is what I used to, what I like to call it, and Modern Minecraft. And they're kind of two different games uh, in my in my mind. Uh, Legacy Minecraft was more about the atmosphere and just that sense of being alone and that the world is kind of completely yours and then you kind of just share it with the monsters uh, but really it's that feeling of being alone and uh, just that atmosphere that was the main driving factor for it and um, newer Minecraft is more about adventure and finding man-made structures and trading with villagers and it's completely lost that sense of of uh, just being your world and everything in it is a consequence of what you build and that kind of idea. I know that he's kind of striving for that legacy Minecraft feel and so I was really excited when I saw that he released this game a day early. So today is March 8th, 2024. It's 4 57 p.m. and his final video for the Remaking Minecraft series is coming out tomorrow. So he released this a day early for people who check his uh, premiere video on YouTube. And I downloaded this off itch.io. Itch and I didn't hear him ever say anything about people creating content for this game. So I really hope if you're watching that you're fine with me making this video and kind of going through and kind of treating it as a tech demo or like um, a game test, I guess you could say, for the first video. And then hopefully... Uh, you're okay with me going on and creating more videos uh, just playing the game because I am I have been looking at this for many months I've been following it since the first few videos and I'm really interested to see where this goes I think it has a lot of potential uh, for a few different reasons which I'll talk about so actually I already recorded this video and it was about 45 minutes long I wanted to condense it down a little bit um, also my recording kept crashing and there were some problems but now I think I've got everything fixed and I'm ready to go so this is my second reaction to Cosmic Reach. It'll be the same stuff, only only uh, structured a little bit better. So the, the boot screen here says, Welcome to Cosmic Reach. This game is in very early development. It is missing features and nowhere near complete, and will likely have bugs, glitches, crashes, and world corruption. Everything is subject to change and not representative of the final game. It's available for you to play so that you can give feedback to give to help guide the future of the game, happy testing, and game breaking. So it looks like uh, he's actually looking forward to people actually testing the game and breaking it in as many ways as possible, which is a good sign. That's a good uh, developer mentality to have, being a developer myself. So he's got a little makeshift UI and font here, and there's a little sound effect when you hover over the, the UI elements. And here's the makeshift title screen. So we have controller detected. I'm playing with a mouse and keyboard right now, but I'll try to test the controller if I remember. Controller support is incomplete now and will be improved in later updates. Cosmic Reach version pre-alpha 0.0.1, final4each.com, and you can watch the devlogs at youtube.com slash at final each So once again, thank you very much for making this and hopefully allowing me to release this video. So we have start, we have open save directory, options, and quit. Uh, for open save directory, and it does open the world data that gets saved after you play, but I don't think there's any way to actually load a specific world. I think it, when you hit start, it just loads whatever world is in that folder. Uh, so that's functionality that still needs to be implemented. If we click on options, we have many different options here. We actually already have some key bindings, which is nice. We have invert mouse, which just changes your Y direction. So when you're looking up and down in the 3D world, uh, it's kind of like an airplane. So if you if you push up on your mouse, it'll look down and vice versa. We're going to keep that off. Uh, render distance goes all the way up to 96. 
uh, which seriously tanks my FPS. I think I get down to like eight FPS and I have a very powerful computer that I just built recently. Um, six is too little. 12, I think 12 is too little, 16. I like to keep mine at 20, but we're gonna start at 16 because that's what the default was, just so I can show you that, I, like my justification behind why I think it's too small. Uh, sound on, and then we have key bindings, and we have WASDA for movement. We have space is jump, we have crouch, which is L shift. That's like crouching in Minecraft. And then we have sprint, which is L control, uh, which is an interesting choice. At first I thought that was a bit weird, but you'll see in game that it's not actually that bad because you just click L shift once or L control once. You don't have to hold it down and then your character will sprint until you stop moving, which is pretty nice. Uh, prone is Z and I don't know if I've just never heard this word before or what, prone. I think of like pronation, but uh, in game this is crawling. It's the equivalent of crawling and you go really slow. Uh, so that's Z. Inventory, you have E and drop item is Q, similar to Minecraft, that's expected. You can hide the UI with, with F1, you can take a screenshot with F2. You can pop up debug info with F3. F4 will do no clip, and I'm assuming that means you can fly around, I haven't tested it. Uh, reload shaders with F6, don't touch that if you don't need to and you don't understand what that's doing. Uh, and full screen is F11, which I'm not going to test because I don't want to ruin the recording. And uh, yeah. So let's go to start. And we have a nice little loading screen here with a tooltip at the bottom. And here's our first world. Now, technically, my first world was a little different because I already played through this and looked at the blocks and stuff once before. But I mean, it's basically the same. So earlier or uh, later on in his YouTube development logs videos, he kind of got away from the earth which sounds kind of funny, but he kind of got away from the Earth look and he implemented the moon, which is just a bunch of what this appears to be stone and cobblestone blocks. Um, it looks like he's got some stars, which is a really nice touch. I like that a lot. And this is kind of a little playground. <clears throat> I'm assuming he disabled Earth to begin with because, you know, bugs and stuff, and it, that's a little harder to get right. The moon's pretty simple for testing. It's just two blocks and a bunch of craters. Uh, so we're going to start off on the moon here and it'll be really interesting to see if he adds new planets and stuff. Um, if you left click on a block it breaks and you can hear a little sound effect. The sound effect is about a third of a second delayed which is a little bit annoying. I can see that getting really annoying actually if you're digging a lot or doing literally anything if the sound effect is delayed that can get pretty bad. Uh, space to jump, we can do L shift to crouch, which really just brings you down a few pixels, uh, makes you slower. Let's see, does it stop you from falling? Yeah, it does. Okay, so it stops you from falling off blocks, just like in Minecraft. And uh, left control, I just tap it, so right now I'm not holding it down, and I'm sprinting. And then if I stop moving, I'll stop sprinting, and I can jump, and it'll keep sprinting. And uh, yeah, so you can dig instantly. A lot of this stuff, I mean, it's just, it feels very debuggy because it's just in the testing phase. Uh, if I right click, nothing happens because I can just use that to build. If you look at blocks, it has an outline. And uh, this black outline is really thick. Um, perhaps something better would be to make it partially transparent maybe like 75% transparent so that you can see the colors of the block behind it. And that way it doesn't look like you just kind of took a massive marker and outlined the block in pure black because that's really, really bold. Uh, so just something that could be improved there. If we press E, we get into this inventory mode. And this is all the blocks that are added right now. You can see the hot bar at the bottom of my screen. I can scroll through that with my mouse wheel, just like in Minecraft. And one interesting little I guess bug would be when you so you can see the mining speed if right now I'm holding down left click and this is as fast as it goes I can also rapidly press left click and it goes faster but if I open up the inventory and my mouse appears on screen right here and then I just hold down left click it just completely wrecks the entire world so just really fast mining instant everywhere I drag the mouse which is kind of funny um, but let's get out of that and 
Man, that kind of looked like a black hole for a second there. I thought maybe there was something in the terrain, but I guess not. Uh, let's go into the inventory again. So we have all these different blocks, and let's test them out. So we have the lava, which I mean, what looks like lava. It doesn't flow yet, and it, it doesn't glow either. Uh, so that's a bit lame, but still in development. And one thing you can see here is that every block has a slab, or many slab orientations. Well, I guess not all of them, because these ones don't. But uh, that's one thing he mentioned in his videos, is he wants most of the blocks to have their own slab types. But if we take a look at some of these slabs, let's uh, lay these down. So we have the ground slab, there's some grass we have, and I press Q to drop items by the way. They just disappear into the aether. Uh, that's not implemented yet. I have the top slabs, and you can't currently place slabs on top of other slabs to make full blocks yet. No, that's still coming. And then we have side slabs, so pretty much just most orientations. And yeah, that can get pretty messy, so we're gonna stop it there. And the lighting... Well, I guess I guess this lighting is actually correct. It looks a little weird, because it has such a sharp shadow. But, uh, yeah. I don't know, maybe actually it could change, I don't know. I don't know if it should be that dark in that little pocket there. So let's move on from the lava. Next up we have the grass block, and then we have this pure green block. And there's the grass. It looks really nice, by the way. Some of these textures look really, really great. And uh, I think part of it is not just the color palette, but the dithering. So the variety in the color of pixel. So you can see like in the dirt here, you have so many different browns. And they're all right next to each other, which is the dithering. And it just looks really nice. Same thing with this lava. It's got all different kinds of oranges and reds and yellow, which I really like. And uh, the stone, not so much. The cobblestone, a little bit more so, but the stone, not so much. Uh, one thing is different between the graphics in this game so far in Minecraft is that Minecraft does have more solid colors. Uh, the colors are a little bit more consistent, whereas this one looks kind of... If you know y Yoshi's Woolly World, where everything looks kind of dithered, that's kind of what this looks like, and I like it a lot. I think this is a, a good change from the original Minecraft textures. And I think he should continue going in this direction with the heavy dithering and the higher contrast within the blocks. And maybe make some more dithering in this stone as well. But again, it's just up, it's up to preference. So let's move on. So uh, this green block here is literally just the grass that's wrapped around each of the sides of the cube. Uh, let's see, here we have cobblestone, which I'm assuming will just be mined stone. And then if we move on, we have these. And actually I'm going to get to those a little later, because these are blowing my mind. I'll get back to those. We have dirt, wood, and whatever this is, like a construction block. Kind of reminds me of a construction zone. Interesting. Uh, we have the dirt which is what you see on this grass block as well. And we have this wooden plank block. And it sounds like there aren't different sounds for each of these blocks yet. That is to be implemented. Uh, let's see, we got sand, we got logs, we got glass, snow. So for sand, it's a nice texture. Um, I think it could be... Yeah. I definitely like it more than default Minecraft. It seems like there's you can definitely see the cutoff. Like this side of the sand block is orange and darker than this side, which is brighter and more yellow. So maybe that could be improved a bit. This is all just programmer art, as far as I know. Um, and programmer art basically just means a programmer who's not a technical art or who's not an artist needed some graphics for his game, and so he just whipped something up in paint. Uh, but it's still still impressive because a lot of this a lot of this looks pretty good. My mouth is dry. Sorry about that. And so next up we have the log block, which is used for trees. And once again, I gotta say this block looks really really good. I like the dithering a lot. There's many different shades of brown. I think they should stay how it is for the time being. And then you have glass, and the glass texture is also pretty nice. Uh, once again, you can really, especially when you look at the sand, you can really see the thick black outline 
that the crosshairs make on it. Uh, and I think that should be a little bit transparent or maybe just the black line should be thinned a bit. Uh, but with glass, looks really nice. Again, the black line comes into play. It's kind of ugly, uh, but I'm sure that'll change over time. Uh, so transparency is working really nice. And let's see, let's drop some of these and move on to snow. And then this, which looks a little weird, like the bottom of the texture is cut off here. And uh, that's actually water. It doesn't look like water, but it is. And then we have stone right next to it, which I'm not going to place. And then we have this block here. And I'm going to drop the dirt and grab this iron block. So here we just have this honestly rather nice looking blue iron color. And then we have the snow, which I think also looks really nice. It might actually be the same texture. No, it's not. Okay, I was thinking maybe it was the same texture as the sand, but it's not. I like it a lot. It has a nice, soft, cold look to it. And there's no slipping mechanics or anything yet. And with sand, I guess I should say there's no falling mechanics yet. And uh, then we have water, which you can see kind of changes elevation. I. Oh, you know what? Is that animated? Yeah, that's animated. That's something I didn't notice the first time around. So you can see the lines shifting up and down there a little bit. And the movement doesn't really change while you're in water, it seems like. But if I am to create a pillar of snow here, or any block really, and I add water there and there, you'll, you can see that they kind of combine. And if I go inside, it's kind of disappointing because it doesn't change your view. You kind of just clip through the block as if it's a solid block. Uh, I think it should make your view, you know, blue, like blue shift everything and stuff like that, but that's not implemented yet. And if I jump, I'll actually blast through the top of it. So you can jump like normal, but if I hold down jump, you can swim to the top. So I guess this starts the lighting introduction. So this here is a volcano block, or a magma block, I think. And the lava block didn't provide any lighting, but this one does, and let me show you that. And, uh, oh yeah, okay, so here's another little glitch. Sometimes if I am pointing kind of far away, even if something should be in range, the black outline kind of flickers around, which is uh, something that needs to be fixed for sure, but no big deal. And then if I place this down, you can see that it gives off lighting. And it's a red light, which is really interesting. Because if you recall from Minecraft, there isn't colored lighting. Everything kind of provides the same color of light, which is white. Uh, but this game, one major improvement it already has on top of Minecraft is colored lighting. Which is really, really awesome. This looks incredible. I love the colored lighting. I think it's a huge improvement. Uh, it's, I think it's something that Minecraft should have had a long time ago. And you can imagine creating some really cool environments with it. So you can so think about maybe like creating a winter wonderland and you have different shades of blue lighting flashing around, that kind of thing. Uh, you could create a nightclub and have different colored lights flashing around. Just different things like that. And you can really add to the ambiance of your builds. So these ones right here that I skipped don't have slabs. There's probably a good technical reason for that at the moment. Uh, but I guess I'll just take those. And if I lay them down, you can see that they're all lamps and they have a little interesting texture here. And they all give off a different color of light, which is awesome. This is really, really cool. And you can even, from what I can tell, maybe my eyes are screwing with me, but I think if you place them next to each other, you can get colors that uh, are mixed, so it kind of combines the different colors. If it's just my eyes messing with me, then let me know, but I'm pretty sure it is combining the colors. And so, yeah, you can create all kinds of different interesting builds with colored lighting. And one thing I want to show is if I go into the options, oh, there's a respawn, interesting, let's try that. Okay, so that just takes me back to the respawn point. This is lighting space day. So if I look out at the world and I toggle that, I can make it dark night, which has an ambient lighting of this dark purple color. 
I can change it to Earth Day. So this is what the sky would look like on Earth. And there's no uh, daylight cycle yet, so the lighting's not going to change dynamically. We have orange sky, which kind of reminds me of being on Mars. So if he's going to continue with this other planet implementation thing, then uh, he could consider adding Mars or, you know, different colored skies for different planets and things like that would be really cool. And then you have pitch dark, which is just blackness, which has a really, really awesome application, uh, which I'll show you in a sec here. We have overcast which I can see being used for rain and things like that to darken the sky. And then we have Space Day again, which is the stars in the sky. So one thing that is very, very cool about this is that the screen may be pitch black right now, but when you put a light down, look at this. This is awesome. So you have everything that's pitch black, and then you can create some really, really cool ambiance with this. And you can kind of mix the... Let's mix red and blue together. So you can create like a path of lights. Man, it, so, so if you had a daylight cycle that at the, in the middle of night was pitch black, and you needed lights to you know light up your house and all your stuff, you can really imagine making some cool things with this. And let's try a couple other ones. Another thing you can imagine people making... Uh, Minecraft, old Minecraft at least, had some pretty convincing horror elements. Like if you turn the fog all the way up and that kind of stuff. It's kind of a little bit scary. But this being pitch black with colored lights... can You can, you can imagine people making some really, really uh, terrifying walkthrough experiences. Especially if there's monsters. So you can think of maybe like a, a Minecraft spider which with its glowing red eyes in the dark. And uh, if you're just like walking in the dark like this and a creeper shows up, that can get really terrifying. Uh, I'm not saying this game will have any of those monsters, but just an idea. But yeah, really, really cool. I love this. I think the colored lighting, like I said earlier, is the number one thing that uh, really... Uh, made me follow the development of this game. And it's a huge improvement on Minecraft that I think uh, Minecraft itself should have had a long time ago. Because you just think of the number of possibilities you can have with this. And it's, it's really endless. There's so many cool things you can do with it. So that's that. So let's move back to Space Day. And then our cool lighting kind of goes away, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to try to show as many bugs as I as I remember coming across. And this isn't really a bug, it's more of just a physics mechanic that's not implemented great. So if I push myself up against a wall here, let's create kind of a runway, and I'm walking and I jump, it feels totally fine. And my forward momentum restarts, and it restarts pretty reasonably as I as my feet come over this block. But, let's add some more of a runway. If I run towards this block, and then I jump, you'll see that my forward momentum is completely dead when I hit this block. But then when, I, when my feet come over top of the block, my forward momentum restarts in the sprint velocity. So it's just like a, oh shit. It's just like an instant restart of momentum. Maybe it'll be more obvious if I look forward. So I'm gonna run, and you can see I just like take off when I when my feet pass the top of the block. So that's something that needs to be changed. And I suppose it's the same thing when you're not running. It's just a little bit less noticeable because your forward velocity isn't anything crazy. But with running, well, let's see. <laughs> with running, it's definitely noticeable. Uh, another thing I'll talk about with bugs and physics is the jump itself feels really weird. When you start jumping, it feels pretty floaty, which kind of makes sense because we're on the moon. But I don't think that's just a moon mechanic. I think that's just how the jump is programmed. It's a little bit floaty. It's not terrible. Uh, but then at the apex of the jump, when you're coming down on the second half of the parabola, it feels like gravity is way too strong. It just kind of pulls me down really fast. So I'm kind of floaty while I'm going up. 
you can see and then when I come down it just kind of tugs me down so I think that gravity needs to be reduced and things need to be tweaked a little bit with that it's not horrible but it's definitely noticeable I feel like I'm being slammed downwards and it's especially true if I'm sprinting so while I'm sprinting and jumping it's fine on the way up with the jump it still feels a bit floaty um, but on the way down on the second half of the parabola my forward momentum feels like it gets kind of cut off so if I move forward you can see when I'm falling from the jump my forward velocity kind of dies out and then as soon as I hit the ground it picks up again I'm not sure if you can tell based on the video but if you're playing the game you can definitely feel that so some tweaks need to be made there and oh my god yeah so just looking at the lighting there that is really really cool let me actually and that's that's just a few blocks on the ground look at that that is awesome so you can imagine like lighting up an entire mountain and having a city with all the different colored lights all over the place and if you could control things dynamically like with a, a redstone type of block that's going to be really really cool and yeah definitely i think this is going to be a huge attraction for people to this game to try this game out and uh yeah it's it's the main thing that i think gives us that that made me attracted to the game and i think i think just having one really nice feature over a game that already exists can really put you on the map and uh, give your game a lot of potential and we're gonna go ahead and hit uh, f1 which hides the hud so you can see what that looks like one bug here is that if i hit e to go into my inventory i'm in inventory mode because my mouse cursor pops up and i can't move or anything uh, but the inventory doesn't pop up which i guess makes sense because we're hiding the the graphics but i can still dig at light, light speed so that's something that needs to be fixed so I'm going to turn the HUD back on, and then I'm going to hit F3, which will bring up the debug stuff. And this is actually what killed my old recording, because I had uh, start and stop hotkeys on OBS tied to my F keys. And now I don't, so I'm okay. So you can see at the top left there we have FPS, which is going kind of crazy right now, but it's about 60. And below that, you have position. So here's your x-axis, here's your y-axis, and here's your z-axis. Below that you have the chunks that you're on, or the chunk that you're on, which is pretty nice. I'm not sure if they have that in modern Minecraft, but in legacy Minecraft they definitely did not. You had to divide each of the position coordinates by 16, or however big the chunks are, in order to get which chunk you're in. Block, base, air. Uh, for this one, let me show you exactly what that means. This isn't very useful, it needs to be updated. Uh, but basically what that means is it's the block that's at your feet. Not below your feet, not around your feet, but at your feet. And that means that it's always going to be air, or almost always, because you're not clipping your feet through blocks. So like if I hit this block like this, my feet's here, not inside that block, so it still says air. Uh, but if I put down water or something I can walk through, then you can see when I walk inside of it, it changes to water. So definitely something that needs to be changed. It's a little bit useless right now how it is. Maybe that can show you what your um, what the outline is on. So if I do this, it should say stone. If I do this, it should say air. The water acts a little weird with its coloring. If you move farther away, it gets darker. I don't know if that's intentional or what. Lighting, 0, 0, 0. I'm not sure why there's a triplet there. I guess that has to do with the axes, but I'm not really thinking through it. Um, and uh, if we put down a light block, you can see it change. So as you get closer and as you get farther. Uh, sky is... F oh, there we go. So that sky label is actually changing now. Before it was always 15. Now, for some reason, it's actually changing, which is... But it's changing really drastically. I think that might be broken. It's usually 15, but I guess if I come close to this light, it goes down to 10, down to 0, back to 15. So I don't really know what's going on there. Uh, block nibble layer. Sometimes this switches between block nibble layer and block single layer, as you can see when I'm jumping. Um, and it's not just whether or not you're walking or jumping, because sometimes I'm walking and it says single layer. So I guess that's more of a 
debug thing for him. I'm not really sure. Palette size, palette ID size 2. Don't know what that's all about. Uh, regions loaded 29. Not really sure what that is. Maybe it has something to do with the chunks. Below that, you can see chunks loaded is 14,000 with this render distance of 16 chunks. And below that, you can see the world seed. And yeah, so that's the debug info with F3. Uh, actually, this might be a good time to also test no clip, which is F4. Let's try that. So right now, okay, yeah, wow, okay. I wish I was doing this earlier because this is really useful. So you can just kind of no clip around and fly around. And there's my render distance of 16 chunks. And if you don't know what no clip means, it basically just means that you can go into blocks. You can fly through solid uh, objects. And so if we fly up into the sky, we can kind of see how far the 16 render limit is. And I think this is not very good. I think you should be able to see a lot farther if you have a PC capable of doing that. So let's go ahead and increase that. If I go up to 96, I'll just show you what that looks like. Uh, but it does tank my FPS. I've seen my FPS get down to, I think it was 8 or 9 last time I tried this. And yeah, you can start to feel it chugging along. And there's some uh, rendering errors there. I don't know why I get those black splotches, but that's something that has to be fixed for sure. Uh, the blocks also look like they're very liney. Uh, like there's some grainy texture to it. And you can really see this clearly when you look at the stone. But as you can see, the, the chunks are loading really far away. And my frame rate is down to 10. So I'm going to change that. And for me, I think 24 is a good spot. So 24 gets you this far. And I think that's pretty reasonable. And if you want to go higher, you can go higher. And wow, that is really bad, those visual artifacts. And my voice keeps cracking, it's because my mouth is dry. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of visual artifacts at the edge of blocks here. So I hope that gets fixed sometime soon, because that's really ugly. Uh, one thing I ran into that I can't really demonstrate. Oh, what if I, what if I uh, get rid of no clip while I'm in the sky? Okay, I fall. Interesting. So one thing I can't demonstrate, but a bug I ran into is... Seemingly randomly, uh, I opened my inventory, or I opened uh, Escape, and every UI texture turned into the sprite sheets of the different tiles in the game. And it was really, really weird. So there were like, right here, there were five copies of the, the sprite sheet with each of these different tiles in its uh, 16 by 16 grid. And it was kind of like in a 3D view. So it was rotated along the x-axis, so it wasn't the entire sprite sheet. It was really weird. And same thing with like the HUD turned into a, a, a sprite sheet. And then when I tried to go into the options, it was the same for all this. And I went to the main menu and it was the same. So just all the GUI graphics got corrupted. And then I had to, uh, had to end up exiting out of the game and reloading. And I can't uh, replicate it, which is kind of sad that I lost that recording. I wish I could replicate it, but I, don't, I have no idea how that happened. So I guess I'll just mention it there and maybe someone else will run into the same problem. Pressing Z, you can do this crawling motion. So you're going really slow and you can kind of see your size compared to a block. You're about 16 pixels high. One thing you can do currently is you can be crawling and you can crouch at the same time, which is a little weird doesn't really make sense and your speed will go even slower so that's something that has to be fixed so here's my speed if I'm crawling here's my speed if I'm crawling and crouching let's go to dark night this is really cool I just keep talking about the lighting because it's so awesome I think that's the best feature that's available in this game so far it's just really really cool and I can see a lot of neat things being done with it and I'm definitely going to be incorporating this into my builds going for uh, going further and it looks like these magma cubes might even be a little different in the red color than this red lamp here. Uh, this just kind of served as kind of a little tech demo slash showcase for the game before it even really comes out. And uh, thank you very much to Final Four Each for producing those videos. 
I know when you're trying to make something, it's always harder when you are at the same time trying to create videos for it, to advertise it, or just to do development logs for yourself. It takes a lot of time to produce those videos and takes time away from the development of the actual game. And I'm a game developer myself and a software engineer, so I understand uh, the struggle behind that. I will definitely continue playing this and experimenting in the near future <clears throat> as the game gets updated and just in my free time, because I think we can create some pretty neat builds right off the bat with all this lighting stuff. So we'll see what happens. But uh, before I go, I don't know what I want my thumbnail to be like. Maybe I'll have half the thumbnail be not lit up. Something like that. Something, something cool and interesting. We'll see. But if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. I plan on having more of this stuff in the near future. Uh, this is a new channel. I just wanted to I wanted to create a gaming channel for reviews and stuff and I guess maybe like retrospectives maybe but I just haven't gotten around to it and I thought that the release of this game would be a good convenient excuse to get started on that. So thank you very much for watching Final Four Each. Thank you very much for making this and I will see you next time.